All right, I get it. Soldering is difficult, especially if it's your first time doing it. You're bound to mess up. Take for example, this. This is my clue board, the second keyboard I've ever built. I screwed up the RGB underglow lighting. I lifted two of the pads and I had to fix it with this wire. Not very pretty, but let's not talk about the past. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the HS60, a hot swappable 60% keyboard. Stay tuned till after the break. Disclaimer, this PCB was sent to me completely free of charge, but don't worry, you'll still get my honest opinions. Let's cover the features really quick. It's a 60% hot swap PCB with ANSI and ISO standard layouts, USB mini B, QMK programmable, hardware reset switch, and per key RGB backlighting. On first glances, this is a very well manufactured circuit board. Compared to other keyboards I've shown on this channel, this PCB looks great. All the components are soldered appropriately with no trace of over soldering or burns. A note about that, apparently Yan Carr, the designer of this PCB, hand soldered all the components by himself. Kudos to you Yan Carr for doing that. The PCB uses south facing switches with surface mount in switch LEDs. However, by the USB port, you've got two north facing switches as the hot swap sockets are way too big. The PCB uses kale hot swap sockets allowing you to swap any switch in and out depending on your preferences. No need to learn how to solder, no need to learn how to desolder. It's all taken care of by this circuit board. Personally, I'm fairly adept at soldering and desoldering, so hot swap is not a requirement for me. However, since I've owned this keyboard, I've been able to swap any of the switches that have come my way. It's been very convenient just to try them out. One last note about hot swaps. The sockets do not hold the switches that tightly. So if you're trying to pull off keycaps on them, there's a chance you'll pull the switch along with it. I highly recommend using a plate, even if the PCB supports PCB mount switches. This is a hot swap board, so only one layout is possible. You won't be able to do anything like split backspace, right shift, or spacebar. The good thing is, any key set you buy out there will fit this standard layout. The PCB has backlight RGB, making it only the second keyboard to do so. The first one being the Zeo 60 from Zeo PC. It also has individually addressable RGB backlighting, allowing you to set any LED to any color your heart desires. Unfortunately, it has no underglow effects. So if that's what you're looking for, this is not the PCB for you. QMK is an open source keyboard firmware that currently supports over 200 keyboards and it's rapidly growing. If you'd like to learn more, check out the links above. This keyboard comes pre-programmed with the following key map. Overall, this has rapidly become one of my favorite PCBs. It's hot swappable, it's got RGB backlighting, got QMK, and it's pretty well built. However, it does have its flaws. The first flaw is that it's not USB-C. Okay, okay, maybe that's more of a personal thing, but I do think that the USB port looks more aesthetically pleasing, and you don't have to worry about which way you're plugging in your cable. The second issue is a real flaw, and it took me a while to notice, because I always keep my RGB lighting turned off. From my experience, it takes anywhere from two hours to well over a week, and what happens is that when you have the RGB lighting on, your keyboard can just crap out in the middle of nowhere. It'll just stop responding. The lights will be on and everything, but when you're trying to type, nothing comes out. It was explained to me that this is because the keyboard was not receiving clean power. I've tried this on a bunch of PCs and hubs and MacBooks actually, and I've noticed that it never happened on the MacBook, but it happened on everything else that I have. Your mileage may vary. For you DIYers out there, the way to fix this is to solder in a 22 microfarad tantalum surface mount capacitor. It was recommended that you put it on 
one of the capacitors next to the USB port. This is a great PCB to start off with. It's hot swappable, standard layout, and RGB backlighting. However, because of that capacitor issue, it's not exactly solderless. But if you can get around that, more power to you. By the time you watch this video, the HS60 V2 might actually already be out. If it's anything like the V1, keep an eye out for it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was educational to you. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down, but please tell me why. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye now. Thank you.